Welcome back. As of February 20, 2025, Grok 3 is available free to all users, allowing up to 10 prompts, 10 images, generations every two hours, with the ability to analyze up to three images per day. In today's session, we're going to see how many different ways we can access Grok 3. I'm going to be showing you when to use what and all different use cases. So without a further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So the first way or the first option to use Grok3 is from your X platform. Here I am on X.com. You don't have to be a subscriber. I'm a free user. All you have to do is click on Grok and here you have your Grok3 beta version available for you to go ahead and use. You do have an option of deep search. You also have an option of enabling the think. So deep search is again, the AI research tool that searches the internet and the X keep in mind and gives you a condensed summary of your query. The think option is when you need Grok to analyze more complex queries. And this also gives Grok some time to think and process. So here is an example. You're gonna be using this for hardest problems in math, science and coding with a reasoning model. So more accuracy, more complex solving, you're going to be using think. Deep research is when you have to analyze or when you have to do an academic research, dissertation, thesis, you have to analyze market trends and you're looking for understanding policies, laws, regulations. That's when you're going to be using your deep search. So let me go ahead and show you. If I enable the deep search option, you will not be able to add your files or attach your files. But if I enable the think option, I do have an option to attach my file right here. So that's in your X interface. You do have an option to take a look at your history. And if you like certain queries, you always have an option to bookmark them as well. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the other interface, which is a standalone web interface. This is something I am more familiar with because this kind of mimics chat GPT. And as you can see, I do have all the options right here. I do have deep search. I enable it, disable it. Do have think, enable, disable. The only difference in the X and here is when I enable deep search, my attach file is disabled. When I enable think, my attach file is still disabled. And that is not an option in my X. I can attach files when think is enabled in your X platform. So keep that in mind. If you're trying to upload a file and then use the intense computation from Grok, maybe you have to use your X platform. And what's not available in X and that's available in your web interface is you have an option to change your models. So this is the smartest model. This is the previous generation model. So I don't know who would shift, but again, you do have an option. You do have an option to enable and disable the web search. And just to give you a jump start, they do have examples on when to use what. The moment I click on research, deep search has automatically enabled itself. When I click on brainstorm, automatically think has enabled itself. So it's giving us hints on when to use what kind of model. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the other settings. Of course, we all have the switch to temporary chat option where your model will not remember what you have asked and it's not going to be in the history. It's not going to be used to train the models. So if there's something you want to ask, but be very careful on what you ask, you might want to enable your temporary mode. So I'm going to disable this. Let's click on the history. Here you have your history option. We're going to come back to this in a minute. Let's click on the settings here. In here, your account, as you can see, it's asking me to go super, which I don't want to. You have an option to change the language, which I will not dare do it. I'm just going to leave it to English for now. You have an option to change the appearance from light to dark. That's too light for me or the system by default. And here you have all these options to animate your query placeholders. It's I always like to turn this on so I can see automatically open search results. Again, that, that's totally up to you. If you are a coder, you might want to go ahead and enable this one. So everything is in a markdown, easily copy and paste, um, show follow up suggestions. I always enable this because keep in mind, I am using the knowledge of the LLM to help me improve my output and my queries as well. And again, all of this is totally your call. Uh, wrap long lines of codes. If you're a coder, you want to enable or disable this one. The next option is your data. Here you have an option to help the model improve itself by using your private information or your chats. But again, that's totally your 
option. What I did not see here was custom instructions. So I cannot train this model for myself. Maybe that is for plus subscribers, but I don't have this enabled on mine. Now let's go ahead and take a look at different use cases. So here I am on x.com. I want to go ahead because I'm a free user. I want to go ahead and demonstrate the ones that I've used yesterday. The latest AI trends and news. This is the prompt that I gave in, as you can see, it is deep thinking or deep search and it gives me a complete analysis of what the latest AI trends are on the internet and of course that is also going to be X. It gives me 20 different posts. Here I do have an option to like, bookmark or reply right here. All of these are available to me in as you can see all of these are the latest trending ones as of yesterday and I do have the web page option as well. I can go ahead and click on the web page and I'm going to use the same prompt and I'm going to show you the difference between using a standalone web interface and the X interface. Here in the X, I can reply and I can like and all of this is embedded or inside my X. And let me scroll down. Here is the thinking process. I said, can you take the top three posts and create a new post for me? So what I'm doing here is first, I'm asking it to give me the trends. And second, I'm asking it to use the trends to create a post for me. And here is the deep search. It's searching if you are a blogger or, you know, if you have papers that you want to write, this might be a good option to ask for what's trending and take the top three and create a post for you. And again, once it does that, it gives me all the posts, the web pages, it's creating the key points, the overview and the future outlook, the comprehensive analysis. And it is also giving me a complete detailed synthesis of the new X post and the key citations as well. Now, if I take the same prompt and go into my web interface and ask it for deep search and click, as you can see, what's the latest trending AI news on the internet? It is giving me all the information. It is looking at the web pages as well. So it has completed the deep search. It has thought for it. It has explored the AI trends and it's also comparing the AI news. And here is my information. As you can see, I have seven posts. When I click on it, they're right here. The only difference is I cannot reply to this post. I cannot bookmark this post. When I use my X, I have the options right here. So that's the only difference. Um, let's go up really quick. Yeah, this is the one. And here I can bookmark, I can reply, I can, you know, I can share the same post, but that's not available in the web interface. But I do have um, different options. Here I have seven posts and 79 web pages. When I searched this up yesterday, I have eight posts and 20 web pages. And also one thing that I want to mention is the history. I use the web interface and I also use the X interface in the history doesn't transfer. So I can use my free options here and I can also use my free options here. As you can see, let me take, let me show you the history. This is today's history and where is my history here? This is yesterday's history. So the history doesn't bleed into one another. I don't think they're syncing as of today. So you can take full advantage of using your Grok 3 better version in your X and in the standalone feature. So let me close this one and let me analyze this one. I'm going to close this. And if I scroll down further, it's giving me the key points. It's giving me the overview, the detail, the surprising aspect. Let's see what has been different from yesterday and today. Uh, yesterday was using X Anthropic was the top, the model's latest developments in a output and anthropic and today the latest AI news is Microsoft new quantum chip so again every day the AI news changes and the trend is constantly changing so here is a comprehensive analysis the methodology the detailed finding you know, take your time to read all of this I will probably later on after the video but here you have all the different information and the citations as well now the one thing that I wanted to show you in mention is this is not a search engine. This is a conversation tool. And let me show you what I mean. I'm going to click on my history here. In here, I'm going to click on solar system simulations. Again, I 
always look for the fun use cases on X and I try to mimic and copy them. I'm going to go ahead and leave a link in the description box below as to where I got this idea. This is write a JavaScript to simulate solar system with all the planets visible, animate while rotating around, zoom into the sun and zoom out and the solar system is single dot. And again, you know, I wanted to create a black hole and simulate the physics related to attracting the whole solar system to itself. What I want you to demonstrate, what I want to demonstrate right now is I can copy the code and I can paste it. That's not something different, but look what I did. I went ahead, I pasted the code. I let the LLM think, give me the thought process, and here's a code. The code when I copied was not to my expectations. So I went back and I said, this is what I'm trying to show you. I cannot see the planets clearly. They, are, they were revolving way too fast. Improve the code where I can see the planets clearly. Again, it did give me the code. Well, again, I did not like the code. So I'm having a constant conversation. I need to zoom in with my mouse. I need to see, well, I meant orbits, not the robots. <laughs> I meant to see the orbits and it again gives me the code. So I'm using the knowledge of this model to improve the code. Do I know how to code? Absolutely not. But I know what I want. I know what my output needs to be. So I'm using it. And again, here also, I said, can you make it even more fun and engaging? Use your creativity. So I'm asking the model to use the model's creativity because the model has seen multiple simulations and I'm asking it to surprise. And once everything is done, I copy the code and it also tells me where I need to go and execute the code where I'm zooming down. Give me one second. Well, it did not, but you go to editor.p5js.org. Once I copy the code, I'm going to delete this. I'm going to paste the code. I'm going to let it run. And here you can see when I zoom in, I can see the planets. And here is the Mercury. I can reduce it by clicking the minus sign, the speed I meant to say. I can increase the speed by clicking the plus sign. As you can see, I'm going to decrease the speed and I'm going to show you something. I'm going to zoom out and you can see the entire solar system. And when I click on the planet, it says has rings. Jupiter has um, is the largest planet. And here is the Earth has life. Here is Mars, the red planet. And I'm going to zoom in. And here, when I click the space, here is my black hole. And when I click S, here is the super nova mode. How cool is that? When I click S again, everything comes back to normal. Space is for the black hole and S is for supernova. Again, you don't have to know coding, but if you know what your simulation needs to look like, you can have that conversation with any AI tool, but wrong interface, any AI tool and go ahead and enhance the code and give you whatever simulation you're looking for. Now let's go ahead and look at the second example, which is data analysis. So I have downloaded my YouTube data well, I make YouTube videos whenever I feel like, which I should not be doing. I should be more consistent. I agree. But I just wanted to use the data and see what Grok3 has to suggest. So I have downloaded my data from YouTube. I have uploaded that right here. Let's take a look. This is all the data. Um, and once it's done, I said, please analyze the data file from my YouTube channel and provide the following insights. Identify the interesting facts about the data and explain why they are significant. Offer suggestions on how I can improve the number of subscribers. Highlight any trends or patterns within the data. Determine which videos are most po popular and why and create five data visualizations, interesting data visualizations from the data. Again, it's a thinking process. I mean, I cannot use think or deep search here. So it is processing my data file and it's interesting fact. It says high returning viewers based out of 21,000 unique views. And it says only 2% of them are returning subscriber uh, conversion rate. It's giving me the subscriber conversion rate. Most subscribers, heavy videos is how to use chat GPT projects. Your ultimate guide has gained 19 subscribers. Again, it's giving me what kind of videos are gaining is helping me gain more subscribers and all content still performs how to create drag and drop in PowerPoint. I'm surprised this is still people are still watching this. That means they are still PowerPoint users and uh, who use PowerPoint for drag and drop activities in a classroom, short videos, 
Again, it says how to add polls in WhatsApp was one of the most famous um, popular video that has gained me subscribers. Suggestions to improve the number of subscribers. It's a stronger call to action. Well, I don't mention that people have to subscribe. So if you're watching this video, please go ahead, do me a favor. Grok asked me to call out. So I am doing it. Go ahead and subscribe for my video. Leveraging trending topics. Again, I'm a big educator and education and teaching is my passion. But if I find something interesting, I try to put that into my YouTube. So here it's giving me all the ideas. Chat GPT, DeepSeek, Sora have performed well. So that's the trend right now. Of course, AI is the buzzword. Optimizing video length, short, high impact videos are under five minutes. How to add polls, blah, blah, blah. Engage with comments, cross promote content. Again, it's giving me all these different trends and uh, most popular videos, why they are successful, why they succeeded. Again, a detailed analysis that I would not have analyzed looking at this particular table from my YouTube. And here I say, create five interesting data visualizations. It is telling me what to create. And it also asks me, do you want me to create the video, uh, the visualizations? I said, yes, please create the visualizations. And here you go. It is taking time to create the visualizations. And it's also giving me explanation how to add polls was, you know, 1776. And it goes on and tells me what this visualization is insights on what's updated video dominates followed by canvas ai tools give me a clear picture scattered plot video durations of unique viewers and here is a different scattered plot again if you're not a data analyst but you want to use these models to help you analyze data again have a conversation you can say this is not what i was expecting can you give me something different and the models will do it remember they have the knowledge we don't and line charts for subscribers and it's giving me a line chart of when the when i had subscribers as you can see it's 2025 2024 giving me detailed analysis pie chart overview 94 percent two percent of them are returning 94 percent are new which is again good the heat map if you're a statistician you know what i'm talking about i have unique viewers subscribers fun ways to utilize this ai tools well that's all i have for you today i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you learn how to do data analytics how to do deep search how to think how to code even though you're not a coder if you did please make sure you like and subscribe remember grok said i'm not doing a strong call to action so here i am make sure you like the video so subscribe for the video share the video and like always happy teaching and please take care of yourself Yourself.